So week 21. And um, as always, we're going to be talking about what's happening outside of Spain, then an update what's been happening in our week here in Spain, and also our YouTube comments and questions from clients. So if you've asked anything, check it out in that section and about living in Spain. So first of all, we're going to tell you about shock, but it's not shock horror. Um, and we're not talking about the UK. It's people or clients coming from New Zealand. Now we're Having uh, we're help assisting some clients who are coming through New Zealand through the Wellington um, uh, Embassy, and I have to say the experience has been really good with the Wellington Embassy, and uh, shock this week because I was preparing the clients for all sorts of translations and apostilles, uh, and there was contradictory information on Facebook groups and stuff, and also the information that you get. With from the Wellington itself didn't state uh, anything about translations and anything about certain apples stills, um, but not that's quite normal for consulates. They don't put everything you actually need on what they tell you to get. Um, and it turns out, uh, and we have it confirmed via email from the consulate that they do not need translations as long as documents are in English. And the only document that needs an apostille on it is the criminal records check, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so it's fast becoming one of my favourite places, Wellington, at the moment. I can't believe it. that it's not like that in anywhere that I know around the world. And I bounced it off of a couple of colleagues who do the same as what we do. They're like, nah, that can't be right. I'm like, it is. It is. Check it out. Definitely. It's been confirmed to our client via email. No translations, only one document needs an app still. So that's amazing. Uh, so well done in Wellington. We'll let you know, give you an update on how the appointment and the processing times there. From the UK, right, well, we've got a couple of visas in. So from Edinburgh, a visa which took five weeks to come through. A really speedy visa from London, uh, which took around 20 days to come through. So that's great. And that's including them asking for more paperwork. Um, and we've also got a um, report back here from Spain. From Robbo. Robbo is, uh, you'll see, he's always on our channel and on Scats's channel and other channels. Uh, and he's been our client for a while now. And we've been dealing, I think we've been in contact for nearly two years now, Robbo. So thanks for this report back. He finally had his appointment last week. And he says, we will arrive, we arrived at the BLS London for 10.50. Our appointment was 10.15, 10 11.30. Uh, we walked straight uh in and presented the appointment letter to the desk on the left of the entrance. We were given a, a ticket with a number two, uh, <clears throat> of a number and two small plastic envelopes to fill out and ask to fill our name and address and phone number on the envelope. Same as Pete's report last week. Our number was then called. I presented my application first and I was asked to present the BLS checklist. Since receiving our pack, this form has changed. Uh, the the uh, service agent produced a new form. I was then asked to present the national visa application form EXO 1790052 forms that you completed um, and place in the pack. So yeah, remember for Upstix clients, then we give you a folder. That folder actually comes complete uh, with all of the forms that you need. There we go. Um, it gets in a brown envelope with lots more information. We have an information uh, booklet, which is 30 pages thick of A4 information for you to work through, uh, which is a lot of it is about the process, but there's other stuff about uh, just general information about the whole of the non lucrative visa before and after getting here to Spain. It's nothing that we don't send you via email, but it's good bedside reading along with our folders. Our folders are then um, put together with our application forms. You then add your documents as you get them to that and take them to your appointment with you. We like to send out physical folders. Um, then where were we? I was then asked to ask for a photo. This is strange. Again, look at this. Good job of telling clients to take photos because they didn't take a digital photo again on this point. After after this, they asked for proof of income, which was my bank statement and pension statement. Um, I was asked to produce the ACRO private health insurance and good health. Uh, a good health certificate, which I believed, I believe that they kept the originals, okay, and they should return them um, to you if they keep originals, because um, they shouldn't really keep originals. In fact, you should take a copy. They should look at the copy, stamp the copy. So they should look at the original, stamp the copy, and keep the copy. But to be honest, if they insist on keeping original med medical certificates and acro certificates, then it's not the end of the world because um, you don't need them for anything else. Um, she then asked if I had any other documents. So I gave her my marriage certificate, 
and the original documents including the apple store translations were given back to me and stamped original scene okay okay the original was including apple store. okay so this occasion they did give the originals back and that's what they should do so they only take the copies of all three original including marriage certificate okay that's understood now i have had it where they've kept originals though even the last couple of weeks i also provided a company letter translated by you in spanish detailing the extra paper that i submitted i then had to fill in and date the the uh the two forms detailing where i lived where i was born and how long i've lived in the uk and my passport number once this was all done i made the payment it was and it was sandra's turn the whole meeting took around 50 minutes it's quite long actually and I was told I could track the progress online using the reference on the payment receipt now we have to wait okay Robbo well done it's been a long stretch to get here but your paperwork's in and it's already been in about a week now so let's hope that your visas don't take too long to come out and uh, Robbo's already given us some photos as well from inside the BLS centre so you can get an idea of what it's actually like to be in there um, and after all that preparation you have to stand at these like, desks which are super high and you can't see what's happening on the other side but I'm sure they do that on purpose um, and uh, I'm sure that Robert will get his visa out very soon okay then so what else do we have for stage one we've mentioned about getting the uh, the visas from Edinburgh and London nothing out of Manchester uh, at the moment um, so let's talk about what's happening in Spain. So this week we've had a multitude of appointments going through and to start with we had an EU to EU permanent residency application go through. So remember when you get your after five years of having EU residency you'll need to switch that for a permanent card and you'll get exactly the same little green card. It doesn't have a photo on it if you're an EU citizen and it will just say permanent on there. Now you never have to renew that again, okay? Because they don't hold um, photos until you lose it or it rubs off, which generally happens on these green cards, you will never have to renew it. You will be a permanent resident. Uh, uh, um, you don't have to renew it. For people who have a third country national permanent residence, evidently you have to renew it because you have to renew the photo on your card. Uh, what else do we have? We had a couple of pension, uh, pensioners, sorry, a couple of um, EU residencies based on pensions going through in Fingerola. They are pensioners, but it was based on a pension. I wanted to mention that because we didn't take proof of the pension payments to this account, uh, this appointment. We only took the S1s and a translation of the P60s, which proved what was being uh, the, what pensions were being paid. I thought they may ask for bank accounts as well, which is a bit of a pain because you're getting paid in a different uh, country. You'd have to have translations. But they were very happy with the S1 and the official translations of the pensions uh, documents that we have to issue the EU residencies. We've got a lot more EU residencies coming through now. Um, nothing on Wednesday, no appointments then. Uh, it was my call day. Generally, Wednesday is my call day when I speak to new clients who are looking to come on board at some point. Um, only that day. Sometimes on a Monday if we've got a few calls to do, but um, mainly Wednesday is my call day. Uh, we had uh, a couple of visa registrations in Malaga afternoon appointments. Don't forget in Malaga we can get afternoon appointments, which is great. I wish some of them would do it like Almeria and Alicante and Mercia. I they'd get some more afternoon appointments on because we could really do with them. And I've just booked uh, for July the 3rd, I think it was, afternoon appointments for Malaga, which is great because that is literally only 20 days in advance. Uh, for a client who's coming over right now with a visa. Um, so I wish though some of the other uh, stations would take uh, note and put extra stuff on because it is really, really needed at the moment. We need more appointments across the board. Um, and then today, there was no appointments out and about today. Uh, I went to the tax office uh, here in Alarine, a local tax office, Patronato it's called, to try and sort out a problem with a vehicle because the vehicle had a name change and an address change and they decided that they were going to keep the taxes uh, at the old town and still ask for them at the new town, which is wrong and it's been updated on the DGT and it's evidently a problem by the local tax authorities. Um, and that's about it for what is happening 
here in Spain at the moment with our appointments. So quite an appointments on the road, quite a quiet week. I actually got out to to meet some clients as well, which was nice down the beach in Torremolinos. They're not coming until next year, but um, to I. I'm trying at least once a week to get out and meet people. Um, again. Oh, I'm lying, actually, I'm lying. I met some other clients as well who are coming over on an NLV. So I've been in Malaga this week, twice, actually, um, to drop some paperwork off, um, which I quite comically went and had a meeting with them, uh, which was specifically to take the forms. I was quite excited about going. I left the forms in the office, then went, got there and had the meeting. And then I had to go take the forms back anyway, another day. But that was great. And um, and I went to the Torremolinos as well, as I said, and actively trying to get out of the office and meet people while they're either during the process, before they have the process. Because more and more, for me, it's, it's like we are part of the process, i.e. the paperwork stuff, so that's what we focus on. But when I meet people, more and more the questions about what it's like to live in Spain, and just general everyday livings. And I can only offer a personal opinion uh, due to my experience and experience with other clients and what people tell me, but but it generally seems to go down well, you know. So, so yeah, um, it's nice to get out and about, and it's nice to get out of the office um, at times and meet people, because when we were coming out of COVID and stuff, we did so many visas, residencies for people that I haven't met. And I've got some people who are coming to the second year NLV renewals now, and I still haven't met them. So I'm going to be making sure I can at least get out and say hi. Evidently, we've got the, the phone, email, video call relationship, but in person, I've never met them. Anyway, let's move on to our YouTube comments. So here we are with our YouTube comments. And as I open this up, um, I can see there's some comments off a video missing. I know people have commented on my latest video, so I'll have to open them up in a minute. But going back to, I'm going to work from the newest down to where I think I'm going to be re I've repeating myself. <laughs> um, uh, oh, look at this now. now. As I'm recording this video, because I can obviously pre record them to go out on the Sunday, uh, sometimes it's actually Friday today. Um, I can see that um, Scats has published his Woozy Woozy Hobbly Limpy Throbby Druggy and Knackered Diary number 26. So you want to check that out. I'll actually put the link to his video diary behind, below. Let's support him in everything he's doing at the moment, letting people know what it's like um, to, to basically live in Spain with cancer. And I think for other people going through the same thing, it's very, very important. Um, so that actually pops up at the bottom of my screen as I'm talking now. But here we go. Let's go back to uh, the comments. So, Sayed Sakas Saida Kassas928. Sorry if I got that wrong. Hi, Chris. Thanks for the update. Is there a chance to get your work email address, please? Would like clarification about an immigration issue. Thank you. Yep, I will add that to that comment. In fact, I'll add it right now. And uh, the best place, the best place, mine is chris at upsticks.es, but the best place if you want to, uh, uh, if you've got any questions, is probably to send it to Jane at support at upsticks.es, or if it's about cars at lara at upsticks.es, but I've just added that. Whatever way, all roads lead, all roads lead to Rome and they'll get to me or one of us at some point. Um, Robbo, oh yeah, I had a Malaga storm and I literally ran out of my mobile, I was trying to do more spontaneous shorts, I was like, oh, this will be a good short. And uh, Robbo said, apparently Mercia have really heavy rainfall, still it fills up the reservoirs. It does, and I saw some horrific videos from Mercia, I just hope that, that water channeled into a reservoir, because a lot of the time when it comes down that hard, hard, it just bounces off and goes straight into the sea, which is no good for anybody. Uh, the bike father uh, taxes when registering a vehicle in Spain. So we've got a good. What I'm liking is that I'm getting comments on a multitude of videos. It's not just the latest ones I'm publishing. Great video. Does this apply to motorbikes? Well, I'm planning to move from the UK next year, and I will bring a motorbike with me. Do you have any recommendations to someone who can process documentation? Yet yeah, we can process the documentation on a motorbike if you're coming to Malaga. Um, but um, if you are going elsewhere we'd have to check out what representatives we have to help you at the itv but we can certainly help you with part of it um and as for taxes in spain yep definitely motorbikes you can waive taxes if you own them 
Uh, how to play speeding fine. Uh, Bilal Chaduri uh, 4046. Thanks a million. Uh, weekly update number 20. Didn't do that well, weekly update last week. Why? What's going on? It didn't even reach 200 views. Nice. I'll be looking out for a Timbal. That is from the Norville 2. Yeah, Timbal is the salad that I showed you on that video. Now, podcast number seven. This was our podcast with Jeremy Ferguson, and that got a lot of traction, actually, I have to say. And uh, this comment from five days ago, which has been edited. Um, Barry541, so you're saying if I spent 90 days in Spain, return to the uh, to end UK, start again. So you are saying if I spend 90 days in Spain, return to the UK, end of July 2024, then received my visa in October, I will become a tax resident in the same year of 2024. Yes, that's what we were saying. It's physical days in Spain. And that's what Jeremy explained in the video. We're not tax advisors. That's why we get experts on the podcast. And it's one of my dreams to carry on getting more experts on the podcast to talk about things like this. I know you are wrong. 183 days from receiving TIE, which would take me to 2025, my first tax in 2026. Well, Barry, um, it's your prerogative to um, interpret the information in the podcast, how you feel right. Uh, personally, I believe Jeremy. Um, I know there is a difference between physical and fiscal residency okay so you know when you get your residency card uh, and actually how many days you spend but the general advice is you cannot spend physically more than 183 days in Spain uh, during the fiscal year in Spain from January to December because that will make you a fiscal resident but anybody for anybody out there um, <clears throat> the podcasts are there for you to basically get a bit of advice and if you did want to contact Jeremy, then there's a, there is a link below in the podcast to do so. And we'd always advise everybody to get independent tax advice because, as we know, everybody's situation is diff different. So thanks, Barry, for your um, comment. Um, what I do like to, to do, though, is if you know that we are wrong, then that's great. But stick the link to the law which shows we're wrong and then... Obviously, I will relay that to Jeremy. We'd love to share that information with everybody else. Great content and a really informative video. Uh, your viewing numbers will be rocketed on the back of your recent podcasts and topics and guests. Thanks for that, Simon Hopkinson, 1815. That's again on Jeremy's podcast. Uh, Thomas Williams, 788. Great video. Jeremy's obviously very knowledgeable. I have a question for you. You started the video with a hypothetical amount of money, 400000 on a house sale. Fully understand, uh, but I feel you did complete complete the story. I might be didn't complete the story. If you're a pensioner and managed to sell in a later part of the year, September 2024, and moved to Spain in November 2024, am I right in thinking you would not pay capital gains on the amount in 2024? You may still have that money in 2025 tax year. Do you then pay capital gains on that amount in 2025? Um, I think we, I think book a book a call with Jeremy. <laughs> Definitely, there's the link as I said is below in the podcast um, um, uh, comments uh, bio. Um, <clears throat> I know there are exceptions for state pensioners when it comes to um, capital gains and the amount of time that you've owned a property. So. Um, I would definitely, definitely contact Jeremy on that one. Uh, I'm not going to answer any tax questions. That's why we do the podcasts. But um, hypothetically, if you didn't want to become a fiscal resident, then you shouldn't spend 183 days. But if you're a state pensioner, it's my understanding that there are certain concessions for state pensioners, which mean you might be able to and still not be liable. Talk to Jeremy. We're not tax advisors. I mentioned that. I've spoken to uh, Chris McMillan, uh, PM for IW. I've spoken to a tax expert who says that the two weeks we, we had on holiday earlier this year don't count towards 183 days as we were on holiday, employed in the UK, paying taxes here. Again, the same as a uh, comment from Barry there. Um, yeah, I mean, different tax advisors. Uh, have different opinions uh, maybe people who believe that you're on holiday before you get that residency card um, believe that doesn't count from what I've asked people they say the days experts they say the days in Spain still do count but definitely any what we want to do is trying to get also get 
um, some discussions going on the podcast because it pushes them up a bit. So um, I like the contradiction to what's being said in the podcast and more comments and more links on the podcast. The more links we get on there is great because it helps to push it up the Google rankings as the YouTube rankings really. So um, carrying on here. Now Marbella meeting up sticks at the foreign office. So when you come to meet us at the foreign office, I did a video showing how we walk to get there. Uh, Matthew Trickett, I got my Spanish nationality uh, two weeks ago and I think I've already mentioned this comment on my last video. We've already done that comment on the last video. So we're not going to do that comment. And I just wanted to go to the comments on our latest video, um, which has got 85 views and it was only published yesterday, which I'm quite happy about. Uh, also, you might have noticed that we've got some products there on our, um, on our channel now. I managed to get a shop linked up to it. Now, if you could ask me to do it again, I might not be able to do that. But I was messing about, oh, how can we get Upsticks t-shirts on there? I've ended up with some very strange, weird and wonderful colours as well. But anyway, if you want an Upsticks t-shirt, you can get it from the channel. And our latest video here, which is uh, Mika Salarin, our grandi, Alarin de la Torre, Drive Through the Hills. Um, literally, I just took this video, I've been to a meeting and thought, you know what, it'd be really nice um, to do a video driving the back way, all the way around to where we live. And I thought, yeah, I might get a few views, you know. Um, and people really seem to like the driving videos. And I don't know why, because I just mumble on about rubbish, really, to be honest. But never mind. Uh, Thomas, Stevens, uh, Thomas Stevenson, 2088. Um, hey, guys. Can't wait to be doing your next renewal, which will be the last one. Um, we've had a great journey together and um, hi Chris great video really love to see where you and your family live and work as you know we're really happy here in our Boleas our Maria where you helped us achieve our dream we actually got here because it can get very stressful at times I can tell you with paperwork and stuff like that and Lara and Jane uh, wrote for when we come into the office and Thomas comes in to get his paperwork obviously we've got um, <clears throat> our collaborators around Spain um, and sometimes it gets, as I say, it can get stressful you try your best and you always you always then always when I'm speaking to a client I have to remember it's it's a dream to move to Spain, I already live in Spain I'm already immersed in it, working family life, but people are, are coming here, you know, to live and you've got to try and get, dig deep to get that energy, to try and give that vibrant sort of feeling every time you speak to somebody because it's their dream to come and they wrote here on the board next to me there aren't many jobs in the world where you could make people's dreams come true and it is true so this is a lovely message here from the Stevenson family because they're part one of our clients part of our up six family here and enjoying their life and we'll be doing their last renewal soon so next one great video from this is from Pete H7066 great video nice to hear about your local town we're looking for somewhere in Spain to buy a property stroke live so the more we can learn before we travel the better looking forward to heading over to over for some exploring in September really appreciate all the effort and hard work you guys do creating and sharing videos keep up the good work thank you Pete and I can tell you for those of you um, and please put it in the comments below if you've got this fine the video and you've noticed it we have some exciting things coming we also have some exciting things. It might be towards the end of the year for the channel, but we have some more exciting content to come. I'm always going to carry on doing the visa and residency content. The reason being is because that's what helps clients find us. Um, and it also keeps clients engaged if they're not quite ready to come. Watching these videos, they can see what we're up to, how things are going, ask questions or contact us directly or whatever. So I'm never going to stop doing that. But I've always wanted to share more about life in Spain. It's been really hard to try and incorporate that into this channel as well. But we're going to try our best because my passion is Spain. That's why I love my job. Um, I've been here 25 years and I'm very passionate about helping people move here and live here and share just a little bit of the experience I've had in the last 25 years. Um, user FQ9Q0 something 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 nice town look forward to visit it when we're there to do our TIE renewal docs in next year so I do now when I have the comments I know who wrote that um, but um, it doesn't come up with people's names but it seems to on my mobile for some reason 
Never mind. Shroudy 100. Hi, Chris. Off topic. topic. We don't mind off, off topic. Um, but I hope you are aware that YouTube's new policy of demonetizing channels for 90 days if they simul stream each other channel. And it's not well communicated, though, so I thought I'd let you know. Don't want you or Scouts to get dinged. Now, this is big. Okay, I hadn't seen this, but I'm not taking any risks. So to... So on this weekend, you would have seen, once this video has been posted, that I didn't share the live with Scats on my channel because I know Scats had a channel kicked off with duplicate videos uh, and I don't want to risk uh, losing this channel. So anything, and we, we don't particularly do it to monetize our channel. We do it more to communicate with people out there so they can find us as a company. And um, so I really do thank you for that because um, any information that we might not see, I'm not on YouTube a lot finding this stuff out, is helpful. So I wrote back, thanks for this. No, we hadn't been advised, but something we really need to investigate. I'm trying to find the policy. Shreddy, I'm trying to find the policy, but another John Rare watch uh, has just had four new channels demonetized for multi-streaming. Uh, it's, just, it's a tough strat sanction and evidently for scats who this is a big source of his uh, his income um, is his YouTube channel and that's why they try and support it that would be an absolute disaster um, so I'm not going to be putting any di videos which are duplicated or streamed simultaneously on for the time being until we clear that up I also refrain from putting some music in a video from uh, Benny Sachs our last, uh, on our last um, weekly update. I had the saxophone guy, but I realised his music's published on sax um, Spotify and his videos are also published elsewhere, so I wasn't going to risk having duplicate content. Um, <clears throat> and that is it for our YouTube comments. Thank you very much. They are great. They're coming in. We've got uh, questions comments across various uh, videos um, and and this is what i really wanted to do with the weekly updates was to go through and so thank you for everybody who took the time there to comment and uh, let's go on with the next section which is actually all about bits and bobs out and about and living in so Spain. here we are on the a7 heading in the direction of marbella fingerola and I've been struggling with this section to know what to do this week because we haven't had many views on the last weekly update. So I've decided to switch it up. And today we're going to tell you about what's happening this summer in Malaga. So we've got loads of festivals happening. And uh, in the car with me today, I've got Lara from Upsticks Drive. Hello. Who, uh, who's actually been to a couple of these festivals as well with me. Um, so first of all, we're going to run through what's happening and, um, and show you through the acts that are coming. Malaga is absolutely going off this summer. Last year we had a lot of festivals as well. Um, quite famously this year the Cala Festival isn't happening. But that doesn't mean there's nothing to do. There is an awful lot to do. So the first thing we're going to look at is this festival here, which is the Weekend Beach Fest. And this festival is in Torre del Mar, which is one of our our favourite town, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, where we're going to retire. Yeah, I think that's where we'll be looking at retirement down that way. Um, and we went to this festival last year and we're going to go again this year. And it's called the Weekend Beach Fest. Um, it was over four days last year. And this day, this year, it's only over three days. And um, but they've got some huge names now. It's a lot of Spanish acts uh, there. Evidently, we're in Spain, but they have three big stages, uh, two of which uh, they alternate. Um, so they're big acts on one. As soon as they jump off, they move over to the next one, and then they have right at the back of the festival a uh, an electronic music stage. And that's where you'll find Chris Goodacre. And that's where <laughs> I will be, <laughs> unless there's a DJ on the main stage. <laughs> no, but you were there the most of the time. <laughs> I was, to be fair. They had some brilliant DJs on, which was uh, amazing. I mean, just in that section, there's around six thousand people. So. Um, and when we went last year, the ambience was really good, wasn't it? So during the day... You that's where you'll find Chris Goodacre. And that's where <laughs> I will be. <laughs> Unless there's a DJ on the main stage. <laughs> no, but you were there the most of the time. <laughs> I was, to be fair. They had some brilliant DJs on, which was uh, amazing. I mean, just in that section, there's around 6,000 people. So, um, And when we went last year, the ambience was really good, wasn't it? So during the day... You that's where you'll find Chris Goodacre. And that's where I will be. <laughs> you can take kids, 
and they've got a lot of street food stands the drinks aren't too expensive considering it's a festival and you put them on a on a, on a wristband um, and um, and then about 10 o'clock really then that's when the kids Oh, maybe 11 maybe 11 I say well, yeah probably about 11 yeah, o'clock that's when you start uh, the big rock band comes on and I think about 11 o'clock the kids really need to be out of there and then you know it's adult time until six in the morning yeah and it happens for three was it three days in a row this year it was four yeah, days last it was year four years yeah but this time three um, so anyway, this this year they've got one of our son's favourite bands. Oh yeah, he's excited. Isn't he? he can't wait to see him. Europe, Europe are going. What was the song they did? I can't remember. It was um, oh dear, I'll think about it now. Um, final countdown. Oh my word. <laughs> so Europe, the final countdown. They're going to be there. Um, you've also got big acts like Maca Belendi. Uh, they are Spanish acts. There's over a hundred acts going to be there this year. And then from all the way from America, you've got a big DJ, bigger than uh, David Guetta, called Steve Aoki. Uh, he's come in and he's going to be on one of the main stages. And then from the UK, there's uh, an electronic band called Hybrid Minds, which is one of my favourites. And uh, I couldn't believe it when I saw them on the li lineup. So uh, yeah, that's a, the, it's a very cheap festival. It's 75 euros for the three days entrance, or you can pay 50 euros just to get in for a day. Uh, the accommodation evidently goes through the roof in Toydown Mar around that time, unless you can uh, uh, you go to a campsite, which is what we did last year. This year we've gone all out and got a bungalow on the campsite because um, setting up your own tent, albeit you can hire a fridge, um, we need that little bit of luxury to have a shower really the showers weren't the best so um, <clears throat> that's the weekend beach festival don't miss it that is on the 4th and 5th and 6th of July this year and they, and they also have a kids tent with activities yeah they have a kid tent with acti activities and they have a VIP area as well though it didn't look that good I'm going to be honest with you the VIP bit didn't look that good yeah we didn't choose the VIP last year because the kids can't go in there yeah kids can't go in there it didn't look that good though this year we've got babysitters with us so yeah, so I think we should get some VIP tickets do you reckon? Yeah. Right, us. this year we might get the <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, so moving on to the next thing, we've got on the 15th of July, it's Take That are coming Yay! to Starlight. Yay, and I'm going with my friend Tiffany. But now, is Robbie Williams still in Take That? I don't think so. That's what is he not? Someone said no. Just, no, it's only three of them. Someone said there's that Mark. Um, I've forgotten the names now, but anyway. Mark. <laughs> Orange. No, Jason Orange. Oh. What's this Mark? Do you know Mark was always my favourite? Of course, his, his second name. Gary Barlow, obviously he's in it. Not a big Barlow fan, to be honest with you. I find him quite annoying. One of them, I think one of, someone told me that Jason or Howard are now druggies or something, and that's why they're not going to be there. But I don't know if that's true. But how many were there in Take That then? Five. No, there's only three. Yeah. Alright. Anyway, three take that are going to be there at Starlight. I mean, that's a huge band to be here in Malaga. That's in Marbella. Yeah. Uh, Lara's going to go, so she'll give us a full report back. Poor, yeah, yeah. Full um, report. And Tiffany and me are going in a nice hotel. We're going to go to a spa and then have a girls' day. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, that'd be fun, that. I, I'm a shame I'm going to have to miss out on take that, really. To <laughs> no, Can't believe. Stay you'll stay there, home. I'm going to have to... Oh, that's a shame. I've got to stay home with the kids. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to miss Gary Barlow. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, then the next thing is there is... Ha from the 21st... Sorry. In July and part of August, there is the Selvatic Festival, which is actually happening very, very close to where we live, um, at the old um, outdoor cinema. And they've got lots of acts over the... Uh, I'm going to put all the links below to these as well. So, uh, because I can't remember, because I'm driving, I've only got some brief notes that I made. You can hit the links and see who's coming. But the, on the 21st of July, the Black Eyed Peas know, are coming yeah. to Malaga. It's incredible. Now, we're not going to that one. But uh, I, I can't believe that they've got the Black Eyed Peas are coming literally 10 minutes away from where we live, aren't they? Why are we not going to see them? I don't know. Well, we could go. When is it? Find. It's the 21st of July. Oh, I think... Uh, oh, I know why we're not going to see the Black Eyed Peas. Why? Because the night before, 
it is the Ibrida Fest, which oh, is the Breakbeat Fest. Festival. Oh, okay. And we yeah. only have tickets for that. Right, right, yeah. So, uh, anyway, Black Eyed Peas are huge international band, and they're going to be here in Malaga on the 21st. But the evening before, even bigger, now bigger for me, this is, Alternate are coming to Malaga, and there is a Breakbeat Fest, Breakbeat Festival, celebrating 30 years of Breakbeat music from the 90s. And two main stages, it's a capacity of 7,000 people, again, 15 minutes from where we live, uh, or 10 minutes probably, and they've got uh, DJs coming over from the UK, we've got Alternate, Baby D, there's also got Ed Solo, Aquasky, um, there's just so many DJs, over 60 DJs coming, 30 years of music. So my, <clears throat> one of my best friends, who was my best man, he's coming over to, uh, to um, to go dance with us. Lara's coming. I've yeah. already invited half of Lara's friends. Oh really? Is Tim yeah. coming? Don't know yet, but oh, okay. they may do. Oh, cool. I've invited them all. Oh great. <laughs> <laughs> So, do we know we're getting ourselves in for? I'm not too sure. Are we too far too old to go to that sort of festival? Yes, we are. Do we care? No. We're going to enjoy ourselves. So uh, Yeah, because I'm not really good with names of bands, but when you played that, like, you played all the tracks of what's going to be on, and I was, like, dancing around. It was really, yeah. Really early, sort of, 90s. Uh, the yeah, music, that was good. Of, yeah. So, we won't be going to the new uh, uh, stage, I think. That might be a bit crazy, but we'll be with all the old middle-aged people, really yeah, sad. We're, go we're going in the, what do they call it? Super VIP. Super VIP, yeah. We the can sit. Super VIP, yeah. Super VIP basically means that you can, you're, you can sit down sit for a bit. You can sit down on a sofa because you're old. <laughs> but you're older because you're seven years older than me, so you're, you're more, it's more for you, isn't it, than me? This is it, yes. Yeah. So, we're going to go to, they have this like place for old people to go and sit down at a rave, so that's good. So, but anyway, the Hebrew Festival, you can see that that is going to be fantastic. The fact that Alternate are probably, they're probably in their 60s now, those DJs, but um, <laughs> that's incredible. I hope it's like when you went to see Fat Boy Slim and you're out in it with him. Yeah, that was good. Get down and get to go to I got to meet Fat Boy Slim when he was yeah, in Malaga. I, I, um, I can't remember our kids, something happened and I couldn't go. Um, so my ticket was wasted, but never mind. But um, you went and you had a good time, didn't you? I did. I went to see Fatboy Slim. He was at the Brunch Electronic uh, Festival, which we're going to come on to, actually, because that starts again in September. He comes every year in um, autumn, has come for the last three years. And I managed to get some backstage tickets and managed to meet Fatboy Slim, which was cool. <laughs> um, then the next thing, uh, we're going to... My sister didn't know who it was. <laughs> yeah, your sister didn't know who it was. <laughs> my sister saw a picture. Who is the DJ on the radio? Yeah, she's a radio DJ on Monster Radio so if you tune in from I think it's 11 till 1 um, UK time every Saturday morning she's got her own show and um, we showed her a picture um, of Chris and Chris was like oh look look at this picture like showing off a little bit and my sister was like Who, who's that <laughs> but my sister's like five years younger than me so come on I mean I have to admit I did send all my friends that picture of me and <laughs> straight away and then she to be fair when the next week after she went on a show and she played she told the story that she didn't know who he was and then she played the song played his tune so that was pretty cool yeah he was very polite was fat boy slim considering i think he was very busy and he couldn't really be bothered to take a selfie with me but never mind i'd say it's chris from upstick seems like who that didn't no. <laughs> as if you did <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next festival is says festival in the port now I don't know a lot about this but click the link various Spanish artists uh, look like rock bands going to the Brisa festival which is the 25th to the 27th of July apparently in the port of Malaga oh. um, I found it on Google couldn't find out a lot more and um, so oh, hang on a minute is this our turn off uh, yeah. Yeah. So we're going here. We're actually going this evening to the summer party for our networking uh, group, Business First. Yeah. So Saturday night. This will be published tomorrow night, which is Sunday. And I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to get this part of the video done. Um, so the Breezer Festival. Don't know too much about it. Click on the link. Don't really recognise any of the bands, but Spanish rock isn't my forte. Um, but it's definitely worth a look. Um, and Malaga Port's really pretty as well. And Malaga Port's an yeah. awesome place to go. Yeah, it really is. Good shops and restaurants. 
Yeah. yeah, and and Reese, I mean, there is everything. There's a there's a the what's there's it called? Jose Garcia, yeah, the Michelin place, Michelin star restaurant. But then there's the the Italian I like the best, the um, Tagliatelle. And that's the same. It's in a beautiful setting. It's the same co- so, price as all the rest of the Tagliatelle restaurants, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good, good deal. Um, so that's that festival. And what we're also going to talk about is this next thing in Fingerola, which is Mare Nostrum. Now, Mare Nostrum is very, very close from where we are right now. It's literally a two-minute drive from where we are now. Oh. And it's right next to the castle. And uh, it's a big, huge stage that they've got set up. Um, and literally every single week they have different artists on there they can see this this uh, this year they've got flamenco they've got um, comedy they've got jazz they've got rock they did have Ricky Martin once I'm not too sure if he's I don't think he's coming this year and in fact on the website I couldn't see any big names so if you are going to uh, that's simply red this year as well didn't they there yeah, I think I think yeah Ellen was telling me yeah I think so Anyway, check out the link for Mari Nostrum. It's an amazing venue here in Fingerola. Obviously, plenty of accommodation in Fingerola, uh, in the hotels and stuff. And it's also a great town to walk around. Um, and that is every single year that they have that on and events every week. And we've actually been outside on the beach when it's been going off and it always sounded a lot of fun. So uh, check that out on the link below. They've also got in Torremolinos, you've got the... Uh, it's called Festival Puro Latino. Now, I probably won't be going to this one. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely not you. That is definitely not me. Uh, reggaeton and... Um, but what, I don't know what it is for you. When urban music. You walk into a restaurant or a bar and they'll have really nice music that you like on. And literally within 10 minutes, they will change it over to that kind of music, to Latino type or flamenco. I know, but considering, Every time, and it's, I don't know why. <laughs> considering I've been in Spain for 25 years, I really don't like yeah, the you won't, you won't urban find, reggaeton you, music. It's not my you thing. You won't find Chris in the flamenco show, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> not if I can help it, to be honest. <laughs> but I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got nothing against flamenco. You know, I think flamenco is great. No, I'm and just it's, saying uh, you put, it's not your first choice of music. It's not. Especially, I mean, there's some very good flamenco about, but there's some of it that sounds like wailing cats, to be fair, you know, and yeah. um, some of it's very bad, um, like every type of music. But then, flamenco <coughs> dancing's good, so yeah, flamenco. Anyway, we digress there a little bit about flamenco and my distaste for a lot of Latin music. Um, it's not I just don't it's not my cup of tea really but if it is your cup of tea and you, I think it's probably because I can't dance and I have no <laughs> rhythm at all so the fact I have no rhythm at all I know doesn't bode well you're not with, like Ricky are you the Ricky show in Salou I'm not no I've got two left feet um, and um, is it straight on I cannot remember I think so yeah okay well you're the navigator so uh, let me know. You just need to head to the Hippodrome. Oh, the Hippodrome's in front of us now. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so anyway, that's the Puro Latino Festival. If you uh, like a bit of Latin music, everything from reggaeton to urban style, um, then that, and Toro Bolinos has some great festivals as well. There's an electronic one there as well. I can't remember the name of it, which I'll try and find and put on the, in the links below. And then the last one I wanted to tell you about was one that we went to, um, last year which oh what's going on here mm-hmm, don't know. oh there's somebody's pole it looks like there's a festival going on here as we go past mm. um the um <clears throat> the last one that we want to talk to you about is just uh, the day before my birthday actually uh, on the 14th of september is the superstars of the 90s party and that is at the auditorium and we went there last year <gasps> it's brilliant and it's yeah, fantastic it's so good yeah yeah they have everybody from they had that king what was it ho 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 <laughs> king <laughs> africa everybody when we first walked in everybody was in lines like hundreds of people in lines and like kicking their legs and going hey hey <laughs> it was brilliant <laughs> And then it changed it into all different types of um, Sonic. Was it Sonic? Sonic, yeah. Yeah, she was really good. Sonic was there. So all the guys from the 90s 
Hey, oh, how old that? Was it that one? Oh, what she wants? It's another baby. Was that one? Ace of, no, they weren't there. Was, was that, it that, not that they were there? Which one song am I thinking of? Um, it, it, there was Sonic there. There was Real to Real. Real of the Night, that one. That was, yeah, Technotronic. Um, who else did they have there? Oh, Baby really? D. I don't know names. It's so, only if I heard a song, I know what it was. They had a lot. They had a, they had, it was it was a great. Um, I'll show it you. I've got some videos so you can put the end of this video from last time. But if you superstars of the nineties, if you look up for, a, I went with my sister last year. We went with some friends. There was about eight of us in the end. Um, and if you're up to for just a really, and you don't feel old as well. It's brilliant. Well, that's because it's superstars of the nineties, darling. That's what I mean. Like <laughs> everybody's like, I felt like the youngest. It was great you like us that's because everybody's celebrating 90s music in their 50s now so. exactly I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah it was great it was a good cheesy night out there was seven thousand people there but everybody was there it was a great vibe and we definitely would suggest that you go to it but what i would suggest again is that you just spend that little bit extra and get the vip tickets um yeah because it's just so i mean i know it's like what was it extra like extra 20? 20 euros each a ticket extra but then you know the drinks are actually cheaper that's generally what happens um, yeah the drinks are cheaper and there you've got a preference bar which means that you don't have to stand this huge queue um and you there's a you can slip in and out to the, of the front vip area at the front of the stage so um yeah, the VIP area was. It's, I think it's worth getting the VIP. Not thing. that way. You're going the right way. Oh, it's here. This is the hippodrome, actually. Yeah, it's up there, isn't it? Though, where we're going. Oh right, at the top there. Yeah, that's I it. Think so. So, yeah, and that's it. So anyway, we just want to tell you about what is happening out and about in Malaga, the festivals and music. I thought I'd switch this section up. I've got Lara with me uh, as well. Uh, uh, sorry, but what, what about that one we went to um, a few years ago? Was that called Big? Big fest. That's not happening. Oh, when they were scats. Was so good, yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. We saw Jamiroquai, didn't we? Yeah, Jamiroquai was brilliant. Yeah, yeah he and was that like was, uh, diving across the stage. It was so good. <laughs> you had to take a rest between songs. He's not quite. <laughs> you could tell um, he had a bit of a party face. That's the only way I would describe him. Yes. Yeah. But he was good. He was fantastic. Oh, he was brilliant. I think and Muse, age, Muse, was really Muse were there you know, as well. Like jumping around. Right, so that's it. Anyway, we're going to end our weekly update number 21 there. And um, we, uh, we're we now going to stop because we're completely lost. Oh, we are out. And um, Lara's going to direct me in the right direction. Okay. Thanks for watching again. Hopefully, we'll see some of you this summer in a festival. See you later.